Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on types of networks. Today we're going to talk about categories of networks, and then we're going to move on to network topologies. Now there is a lot of information to cover, so let's go ahead and dive right in. And let's start by talking about categories of networks. So when you're describing a network, you have a couple of different options. Are you going to describe its function or its design? If you're going to describe the network's function, then the first place to start is with what category of network it is and then build from there. If you're going to describe its design, then the first place to start is with its topology. But we're going to start with categories of networks. And the first category we're going to start with is the local area network, the LAN. Now, this is composed of a single network address range. That address range may be broken into subgroups called virtual local area networks, VLANs, but they're still all part of the same network address range. LANs can span from a small area, like a single room, to a building or a small group of buildings. LANs tend to have the highest speed on the network of any of the categories. 802.3, which is Ethernet, and 802.11, which is wireless, are the most common types of networks found on the LAN. Then there's the Metropolitan Area Network, the MAN. It's larger than a LAN. Most often, it contains multiple local area networks. Quite often, they're owned by municipalities, so they're owned by cities or large entities. When they are owned by a private entity, sometimes they're called campus area networks, CAMs. Now, you're not going to find that term very often, but you need to be aware that it's there. Now, let's move on to wide area networks, the WAN. Now, this is a network which spans significant geographic distances. Quite often, a WAN can be described as a network of networks. The best example of a WAN is the internet. Also, as a general rule, if the infrastructure has a single owner, then it's not a WAN. Now let's move to the smallest category of network, the personal area network, the PAN. These are extremely distance and size limited. Most often, it's a connection between only two devices. A common example of that is Bluetooth technology. Bluetooth uses a PAN to connect two devices together. They tend to provide low throughput of data and have low power output. Also, as the distance between devices increases, throughput decreases. So now that we've talked about the main categories of networks, let's move on to network topologies. The way in which the nodes of the network are arranged or interrelated is how the topology of a network is explained. The description of the topology of a network can focus on its physical layout, as in how the nodes are actually arranged or connected, or the description of the topology can focus on how the data flows across the network logically as in how the nodes interrelate. It's not uncommon for the physical and logical topologies to be different. For the most part, we're going to focus on the physical topology. The first topology that we're going to talk about is the bus. This is where a network segment is composed of a single cable with each node connecting to that cable. The network signal flows from end to end past each device. A single break in the line will bring down the whole network. An example of the bus topology is the 10 base 2 network. Hopefully you won't see that anymore, but that is an example of the bus topology. Next up is the ring topology. It's denoted by its circular physical topology. The network signal flows around the circle past each node, now, the ring topology does have some fault tolerance. If a single break occurs in the line, the path of the data is actually redirected in the opposite direction, so it can still reach all of the nodes. Now, the ring tends to be a legacy local area network technology. It is rather difficult to find a ring topology in the workplace. But the ring topology is still commonly found in the metropolitan area network and the wide area network environment. 
When it's deployed in the man and the WAN environments, multiple rings are often installed at the same time. This is to improve fault tolerance. If one ring goes down, another one steps up and takes its place. Now let's move on to the star topology. All of the nodes connect to a central device. This physical topology can also be deployed logically as a bus topology if a hub rather than a switch is used as the central device. But if a switch is used, then the physical and logical topologies are the same. The loss of one connection only affects the nodes on that connection. Then there's the mesh topology. In a full mesh topology, every node has a connection to every other node. But there are also partial mesh topologies. This is where there are multiple connections between nodes, creating different paths through the networks, but not every node is connected to every other node. Now, due to its redundancy, the mesh topology is very robust. However, this redundancy also tends to make it more difficult to manage and maintain. Quite often, you'll find a partial mesh topology is deployed in the enterprise environment. Now, the internet utilizes both partial and full mesh topologies, making it a hybrid topology. So let's talk about what a hybrid topology is. Now, it's when there are multiple topologies found in the same networking environment. Like I said earlier, by its very nature, the internet utilizes a hybrid topology. Also, it's not uncommon to find multiple topologies in the enterprise environment. For example, the workstations may utilize a star topology, while the workstation switches may have a partial mesh topology between them. And then there are the core switches, which are often called backbone switches. These carry huge amounts of data and will often utilize a full mesh topology to ensure redundant connections and to create fault tolerance. And all of these can be found in the same networking environment, thus creating a hybrid topology. Now that concludes this session on types of networks. We talked about categories of networks and then we discussed network topologies. Now on behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session and I'm looking forward to doing another one.